Hey, I'm Craig Ford, Mayor of Gadsden. Welcome back uh, for another Mayor's Minute. Uh, the weather's beautiful. It's cooled off a little bit. Uh, however, the weather's getting back up in the 80s today. So here at City Hall, we either have to turn the air on or turn the heat on. We're on a boiler system. So uh, last week, a lot of employees were cold. This week, a lot of them are going to be hot, but we're making do. And uh, we're excited about a project I want to talk to you about, that we are relocating City Hall. Uh, that to the new Regents, I mean to the Regents building on Broad Street and uh, Regents has been a great corporate partner of us and we want to thank them. They are now occupying the first floor, a third of it, and we're moving City Hall to there uh, to help uh, be more accessible to the public. It'll be a better place. It'll be a staple on Broad Street. It will help the community. It'll help. Uh, it's just phenomenal to see the plans. Uh, of what we're doing. Uh, it's going to be more uh, this, uh, ADA compliant. Uh, so this is something we're really excited about. Uh, what's going to happen here at the current City Hall? It's going to turn into a hotel. Uh, we're meeting with hotel people now and signing LOIs and, and everything we can think of and we got that on go and once we get the final plan we'll be able to present the plan of the hotel or what it's going to look like. It, it gets your blood boiling. It's exciting. Uh, this is the most valuable piece of property, I think, in the city of Gadsden. It overlooks our most uh, valuable asset, the Coosa River. And just think about having hotel guests here, generating revenue, putting heads in beds, and then having a restaurant, a bar, restaurant bar on top overlooking the river. I mean, it's going to be really nice. It's going to be something we're going to be really proud of. Somebody asked me, how are we paying for all this? Well, we're generating a lot of revenue. We have cut a lot of expenses. And we saved uh, about nine to ten million dollars with the previous budgets over the last two years. So we're using that savings to put into the new city hall, and then the money we're generating from this property and from the lodging tax and from the revenue we're going to get here out of this hotel. Uh, so we're trying to be smart with your tax dollars, and I hope you see that uh, by cutting. Uh, some essential items that were not being used and by saving on some positions, not backfilling them and reorganize our employ stru employment structure. But we did the grow plan and we realized, hey, y'all wanted some changes and we want to give you what you want. And we also want to run it like a business where we're fiscally responsible. Uh, so that's something I'm real proud of in our first two years of office, uh, that we've generated the increase in budget of over 20% and we've cut expenses by 12%. Uh, so we're, that's moving in the right direction is the way I say that's, That allows us to be able to do more brick and mortar projects, which, which will be quality of life issues for you. And I'll go over a few of those uh, real quick. But one thing that we're working on right now is the Megan Sports Complex. It's where the Aqua Center is gonna go, the Nautatorium. And we're gonna have a whole brand new uh, facility over there with multiple basketball courts. Uh, it's just going to be, we're going to be up to snuff and state of the art. And a lot of people say, have you ever seen Albertville? Have you ever seen Trussell? Have you ever seen Oxford? Uh, we'll be right up there with them, if not better. Uh, and we'll be able to work with them and host larger regional tournaments, which will generate more jobs for us and more tourism dollars, which is important. So that's a big deal on Megan. And also I think it'll rejuvenate the Megan corridor, corridor and help the property value over there come back to life and actually help help a lot of the blighted buildings that are along Megan Boulevard right now. So that's something we're real happy about. Uh, the City Hall I mentioned earlier, uh, November the 7th, we're having the ribbon cutting at Knock Little Falls at 11 a.m. for the new uh, animal barn. Uh, the, the exhibit up there, you know, when I took office, it had burned down. Uh, they decided not to rebuild it. I came in and I decided we need to rebuild it. We need to add some animals uh, for the community and tourists, and we're excited about that. We got all sorts of animals up there that are very neat to see and play with. And we're making it very interactive for the students to learn, and we have some great employees up there that understand how to treat the animals. The one big thing was a lot of the people wanted to make sure we had a fire suppression system which we included in the new barn, and you'll be able to see it uh, if you'll come to the open house on November 7th at 11 a.m. Uh, one big thing that we constantly hear about, that we're constantly striving to do so, is paving, paving streets, not just paving the main thoroughfares. We've done a lot of that, and we've heard people uh, say, hey, I want my neighborhood street paved. Well, I wanted to do one thing. I wanted to take the politics out of paving, and we hired the company. It took some time. It took about nine months. 
for them to ride around with a GoPro camera and they recorded every street in the city of Gadsden. So can you imagine how much time that took? And we rated them red, yellow, green. And we're only going to pay the red streets, the ones that need it the most. Now, I want to be up front with you. If we paved every red street from here until the year 2040, we still wouldn't get through them all. Uh, so we have to take the worst of the worst of the reds and we're going to start paving those and we'll catch up down the road and all I can do is we're going to do our very best. Paving is very expensive. We're looking at alternative ways of paving, tar and gravel, which now tar and gravel, you can't even tell the difference in that, and, and black asphalt. So uh, we're looking into everything we can do to get into your neighborhood and pave roads. And actually, we let our first contract where I think 19 roads are going to be starting being paved next month. Uh, you have to do it above a certain temperature, so we're going to knock those out before the holiday season. Spring will come back around, and we'll have our new paving crew, and we'll be paving roads on our own, plus using contractors to pave some roads also. So that is number one on my agenda. I want to get some neighborhood streets paved and get them back in uh, to shape what we should. Just keep in mind, we got an old city. We went in and paid one road, and we thought we were just going to mill it up. When we milled it up, we found out the base was not good. It was filled with, it used to be an old tire dump back in the days, uh, and we ended up using our whole paving budget on one road. Uh, so that's, that's kind of discouraging at the time, but we did fix the road back to where it should be. And my attitude is, hey, let's do it right the first time. That way we don't have to go back and do it again. Uh, so let me go over some dates, uh, some fun dates that you'll want to put on your calendar. As I mentioned earlier, November the 7th at 11 a.m., we're going to be cutting a ribbing up at the Animal uh, Barn on Knockalittle Falls. Uh, we're going to be offering free admission, free train rides, free putt-putt all day long on that day. Uh, so I hope you can make it. November the 6th, back up one day, it's Veterans Day Parade. Uh, the Grand Marshal is going to be my very own commander, my garrison commander at Fort McClellan. Uh, Full bird Colonel Robert Griggs, who lives in uh, Rainbow City, Alabama, he will be our Grand Marshal. Uh, so we're excited about having him with us. Uh, November the 8th and the 9th is Mistletoe Market, downtown Civic Center at 9 a.m. The State of the City Address, uh, we got some big announcements. I hope you'll make it to that. We had it last year at the venue, same place, same type of environment that we're going to have. Uh, I'm going to be sitting down with Ruth Moffitt this year, doing a one-on-one -on -one talk with her and taking questions from the audience. But November the 19th will be the State of the City Address at the venue at 6 p.m. November the 28th, uh, Christmas at the Falls will open up. You know, Thanksgiving's that Thursday. I believe it's the 27th. And then Christmas at the Falls is November the 28th. That's where we had the Christmas lights. And it's a big event. And that'll be a, a very busy night. So I know they pre-sell tickets. So if you want to go, you better go ahead and start getting your tickets. Because Christina has already said they've already sold out a couple of nights on weekends. Uh, and that starts at 4 p.m. Um, we have some bigger and better lights up there this year. We put some more money into it, and we're going to have better transportation with golf carts and trolleys to get you to and from quicker, and we'll have more vendors also. Uh, and the next day, November 29th, which is a uh, Saturday, is Christmas on the Coosa. If you remember that, it's next to Marina Park, next to the uh, Mr. Gregerson Spirit of American Citizenship Monument. It used to be the old pool. It's down the hill from the old convention hall. Uh, so we call that Christmas on the Coosa. We're going to have ice skating, one of the largest ice skating rinks, real ice, in the state of Alabama. And we're going to have that event starting November 29th, and it'll be going every night thereafter, uh, open Thursdays to Sundays. Uh, and we'll be open during the day for businesses and schools, and we've already started booking those events, so things are hopping. Uh, December the 3rd, Christmas Parade. Yeah, that's a Tuesday night at 6 p.m. will be our Christmas Parade. Uh, if it rains out, we're going to have it the following Friday. Uh, so that would be the 4th, 5th, 6th. That will be the December the 6th for the rain out date. But the parade is scheduled for the December the 3rd. And then lighting of the Christmas trees December the 6th up there where the old convention hall used to be up from Christmas on the Coosa. And we'll have a Christmas concert going on at the Amp. We'll have ice skating going on down on the hill. And we'll have the Christmas lighting. And let me tell you right now, we'll have the largest Christmas tree uh, in the state of Alabama. So you'll get to see it first. We'll have our first annual Christmas tree lighting at that event, uh, at that place, and that'll be our first time ever to have it there, and it's gonna be, we're gonna make it up really, really nice, and we're excited about that. So it's crazy to think that we're already talking about Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, and Halloween, I think, is in a week. So 
you know, when things are happening. And I love the holiday season in Gaston. And let me tell you, we were ranked one of the top five Christmas towns in the state of Alabama last year. And this year we want to be number one. Uh, so this is Craig Ford. Thank you for allowing me to be your mayor.